Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie. I have just finished my degree at the University of Leeds and I'll be going on to study a Masters in Mathematics at the University of Cambridge in September. So today I thought I would release a video about applying to Oxford and Cambridge for postgraduate study. So if you haven't watched my video where I tell you that you know I got offers from both Oxford and Cambridge, to summarise that video I essentially got a place at the University of Cambridge to study the part 3 Maths in Applied Mathematics and also a Masters in Mathematical and Theoretical Physics from the University of Oxford. So those are the two offers that I received and today I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about the application process, you know, what's involved and just anything else that I kind of thought would be useful for you to know if you are thinking of applying to either university for postgraduate study. So the first thing I'll say is both of these courses were nine months. I know a lot of Masters and a lot of my friends that have done Masters are, are usually a year long. These Masters weren't and I think that's because they are kind of added on to the third year degree for both mathematicians at Oxford and Cambridge so it's kind of like if you were to do an integrated masters so you're paying a lot of money to do you know a nine month course but I would much prefer to do the nine month course because then it is almost like an integrated masters you're just paying obviously a lot more for it but you then also get you know the summer to decide what you're doing after that so for me I'm hopefully going to do a PhD afterwards which means you know if I don't get time during Cambridge I can apply in that kind of last summer bit and also you know if it's a nine month course you get summer off if you're not doing anything else but for me I'm hopefully going to maybe get an internship or you know just start looking at PhDs and jobs after that if I don't do that during my master's degree itself. So now I'm going to dive in and tell you a little bit more about each of the masters and just how I found applying and kind of what's involved. So the very first thing I would say is there is an admin fee for both universities. You have to pay £75 for the University of Oxford and £70 for the University of Cambridge. There are waivers for both of these if you meet certain criteria. So household income I think is one of them. There are a few different criteria which I personally didn't actually know. I didn't know it was a thing until after I applied so I thought I would put that in in, you know straight away that you can get a waiver for both the applications if you ha meet certain criteria so obviously I spent nearly 150 pounds applying to both universities I don't regret it because obviously you know I, I was fortunate enough to get offers from both of them however if you do end up getting rejected you know if that happens 150 pounds is quite a lot of money so I guess the first thing to say is if you want to apply and you're not eligible for the you know exemption of the of the admin fee just really think about whether you you definitely want to apply or not okay so next I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I had to submit as part of my application for both Oxford and Cambridge so I'll start with Oxford so for Oxford you had to submit a personal statement which I think was no longer than 600 words alongside your personal statement they also want an academic CV so this CV is not like a usual CV where you put all of your you know jobs if you've done jobs you know waitressing stuff like that internships it's an academic CV so you talk about I suppose what you've done at university if you've done any research if you've had any publications if you've done kind of anything academic wise and that's quite difficult because you know we are if you're applying and you've only done three years like me there's not a lot you can put on your CV that is related to research an academic CV is probably more appropriate for somebody who's a post postdoctoral you know researcher who has done publications it's a lot easier for you to write publications um, but fortunately I did do an internship that was a research internship the summer that I applied so that I was able to put that on there but like I said I'm going to do a video of my personal statement and I will do my CV as well so I'll talk through what I put on my CV for both Oxford and Cambridge so for Oxford you have personal statement CV you're allowed to submit up to three references two of which had to be academic so I had my personal tutor and then I had my tutor who taught me for fluid dynamics because I applied to more fluid dynamics that's why I want to apply because I want to study fluid dynamics type modules and then I also had a reference which is not academic but it was from the internship that I did over that summer so my boss who you know supervised me on that research internship so I had three for Oxford alongside those three things you need to submit your transcript so if you go to university or if you're in first year and you're thinking I definitely want to go to Cambridge a lot of people say in first year that first year doesn't count but what I would say to that is your results from first year are on your transcript no matter where you apply if you ask for your transcript and someone wants it your first year results are there so although first year doesn't count it definitely does have a I suppose, contributing factor if you want to go on to do further study so your transcript for me it was the modules I'd done I think in the first 
two years of my degree um, and then I submitted that transcript and obviously they didn't know what I'd done in my final year that's why you have a certain condition that you need to meet in order to get the offer so I need a first from both Oxford and Cambridge so another thing I think is English so if you are overseas I think you need to take an English language test obviously you know I was born in England I didn't need to do that because I, my first language is English but if you are from overseas or if your English isn't the best then I think you need to do something to do with English but I'll put links to both of the courses that I did so if you want to you know check them out then I would recommend doing so so those were the things that you needed to apply for Oxford and then for Cambridge it was essentially the same so you had your CV your transcript references but only two academic references i wasn't able to submit the one that i got from my research internship so i only two academic references so i use the same references that i use for oxford the academic ones and then instead of a personal statement you essentially have to answer certain questions i think there were three questions i can't fully remember what those questions were now but it's very similar to what you wrote in your personal statement if you apply to oxford so i tailored what i wrote in my personal statement and kind of took that and, and put it into my application for Cambridge because it's essentially the same thing. It's, you know, your reasons for applying. And similarly, I believe that Cambridge has a certain English language test that you need to do as well. But as I said, I'm not familiar with that because I my first language is English. So if you are from overseas, then definitely check out those websites to check what else you need to do if you're first language isn't English. So those were what you had to submit for both of the courses. There were no interviews. So both of these courses don't have interviews, which you can look at it as either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on, on who you are, whether, you know, an interview might help you shine out more or whether, you know, you're worried about interviews, you know, because interviews can be quite nerve wracking anyway. I'm fortunate that I've had quite a lot of experience with giving interviews just from applying to a whole range of different internships and things. So I think I would have been happy if, if there was an interview, but I suppose if you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, now I feel a bit more confident in applying because I don't do as well as interviews, then this is a really good thing about both these masters. Another thing to say at Cambridge, if you are wanting to do a PhD, so I appreciate some people just do masters because they might want to get a job in engineering or a certain job requires masters and they don't want to do the kind of typical maths route, which is like, you know, accounting or finance, because you, you only need a bachelor's for that. If you are wanting to do a PhD at Cambridge, Cambridge say that, especially in math, this is, this is specific for maths, it may be different for other PhDs, but they say that mm, almost always they prefer people who have done part three to do the PhD. So I think if I had done my masters at, at Leeds, say I did my integrated masters, finished it there, and then applied for a PhD, I think I wouldn't have stood a chance as opposed to you know doing my three years at Leeds and then doing my part three masters at, at Cambridge. So that's something to bear in mind. If you have a PhD that you're set on, have a look at what you may need to have before that. That's just a kind of little side note, I guess. Just realise I'm not I'm not really in centre here, am I? There we go. The other thing to say is if you are thinking of applying to both these masters, when should you apply? When should you start thinking about applying? So I probably started thinking about applying around August. So it was something that I had in the back of my head and I was doing a bit of research on in between my internship last last summer, because that was, you know, the whole of summer. And I was like, okay, I think, you know, I've looked at both courses, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, happy with both of them. I think they both look really, really good. For me, it was that Leeds, if I did an integrated master's, they just didn't offer the modules that I wanted, you know, I'd have had to have done modules that would have been fine, you know, I would have been able to learn them, but maybe didn't enjoy as much. This year I looked and there's only really one module that I wanted to take. You know, I, I appreciate we do get quite a big, I think it's master's project, but you still have to fill up the rest of your modules in other areas of maths. And I wanted a new change, so I looked at both these courses and both of them offered really, really good modules. Cambridge definitely offer more modules that I wanted to take, like fluid dynamics and astrophysics. Oxford, I made the mistake, I made a really, really big mistake of actually reading an old module handbook. And in that old module handbook, they had fluid dynamics modules, which have since been cancelled, which when I then went to compare the two masters i was a bit disappointed that there wasn't as many fluid dynamics modules so that was definitely the contributing factor to why i chose cambridge but as i said if you're thinking you know you say you're three years now and you love what you do and your integrated masters may allow you to take even more modules at your uni then perfect you know you're able to do those modules i just felt like i wasn't at leeds per se the modules i want to do are very niche you know fluid dynamics is not really an area that everybody seems to love and especially at universities if you don't get enough people on that course they'll cancel the course 
and I found in the fluid dynamics modules the numbers just seem to kind of deteriorate this you know I think we had like seven people in lectures for my hydrodynamic stability there's probably more people on the course but seven people attended lectures which is absolutely nothing opposed to you know 100 people attending lectures that I other lectures that I'd done so back to the point that I was trying to make was when should you start thinking about applying I'd say about now I'd say if you're in your second year and you're thinking of applying just have a look at both of the modules you know see what there is that is on offer whether you want to take them whether you don't what modules you think you would enjoy and just see if it's the course for you i spent a lot of time looking at what i could possibly take and i was listening you know cambridge especially there are modules that i was literally like whoa this sounds incredible like i definitely want to do this i know it's going to be hard but but i'm prepared for the challenge i would just say look now i checked back on my emails to see when I actually applied and I found Oxford and I, I think I applied to Oxford and Cambridge literally on the same day and Oxford I applied on the 2nd of October and I have a feeling that it was released like the 1st of October so I, I, I know that I was very very early on applying like incredibly early and a part of that was really good for me because it meant that I spent the summer thinking about it you know writing my CV doing my personal statement contacting my references which is really important contact them now say that you're thinking of applying to this and contact them because references you know academic staff are very busy contact them as soon as possible if you know who you want your references to be and then so for me I did all that in the summer I kind of collected everything at the start of September and I applied literally I think the first week of uni which meant then I didn't have the stress of it all throughout the rest of uni it was I'd applied okay we'll hear back in you know March and I did which is kind of you kind of almost forget that you've done it so I would say if you want to apply to either of these or just postgraduate study look now start looking at the courses that you want to take see what is required contact your references so important because sometimes academic staff can take ages to write references I was lucky that mine didn't mine were really really good but yeah it, it just depends on who your references are I think it's better to do that in summer rather than alongside your degree just because it makes things a lot easier i guess so that's something i would say start looking now start being a bit inquisitive about what you think you want to do and it's not the end of the world if you decide what before applying maybe these masters aren't for me you know at least you've done a lot and got references that you may then need later for another job or another kind of position and you've got a cv and a personal statement written it's all good stuff you know <laughs> i guess the, the final thing to say is both these masters are incredibly expensive so I wrote down here, because I can't remember on the top of my head, that for Cambridge, the Masters itself is £11,000. So that is obviously a lot more expensive than, than, than the £9,250 you usually pay for undergrad. Then Cambridge say that you should spend around £11,100 for living costs. So this is kind of food, um, accommodation, books, traveling, basically everything. This is the minimum that you would, would expect, would you would be expected to spend. So it's around 22,000 for the entire masters. If you're a home student, if you're overseas, then it's 33,000, which is a lot of money. You know, I was part of a forum, I think it was like the student room, and someone said that they just can't take the offer because they don't have the funds for it. You know, personally for me, I made a massive mistake of just having major imposter syndrome after I'd applied. The funding was all kind of January time and I was revising for my exams and I just told myself I wasn't gonna get in. I just had this kind of blip and I've overcome that now, never going down that kind of little, you know, where you just don't believe in yourself enough. Um, so I had this major imposter syndrome. I was like, I'm not gonna get in. There's no point in kind of applying for, for funding. I'll just work really hard on my exams. And then when I got in, I was like, oh no, like, what am I gonna do? I need to fund these masters. Luckily, I think a part of me, although I was kind of had massive imposter syndrome, I was like, well, I'll just save up on the offside instead. I've worked really, really hard this last year. You know, I did my internship over summer, which was great. That was a good chunk of money that I managed to get. I did some Deloitte Campus Ambassador work. I did, you know, loads of different extracurricular things. I did loads of part-time work, saved up a lot of money. And I am very happy to say that I'm in a position where I can fund my master's. Obviously, I am taking out a student loan, which I think Student Finance England do a postgraduate loan for, I think it's £11,500. So immediately I can just cover my course fees, which is perfect for me. And then I've managed to save a lot of money. I've worked very hard. <laughs> I've worked very, very hard um, and, you know, saved a lot over the last three years anyway. 
So I'm very happy to say that I can fund my own masters and I think that's something that I'm really, really proud of. It's a lot of money to be going on a masters, but you know, what better masters, I guess. Um, and then aside from Cambridge, so that's Cambridge costs, Oxford is 10,550 for the masters, so it's slightly cheaper. Um, it's 27,000 if you're overseas, so a lot more expensive. And then they say on the website, it was around 1,500 plus for every month you're in Oxford. So if you stay there for the whole year, I think it works out roughly the same between the two, two unis. I did a lot of research and Cambridge, I believe, is actually a cheaper place to live than Oxford. So that's, <laughs> that's good for me, I guess. Um, but that's, that's something to say is if you are thinking of applying, the masters are incredibly expensive. Any masters you do are incredibly expensive. One of my friends did, I think it was a mining engineering masters. She had to take out a student finance loan and then another loan on top of that just to fund the masters. Masters are expensive. That's just the way it is. That's why people stick and just do a, a normal masters. But for me, I just really want, wanted a different change. So I guess if you're gonna apply and you're definitely set on applying, look at the funding opportunities. Don't make the same mistake that I did. You know, I, I wish I would be in a position right now where I was able to have funding because it would make things a little bit easier. But equally, I'm very proud to say that I will be self-funding the, the masters that I'm doing. And that's something that I am incredibly proud of so funding just make sure you have a look at funding because masters are so expensive that's something that you don't really realize until you apply you think oh it's fine you, you'll get a student finance loan you'll get maintenance loan like you normally do no unfortunately not and that's i guess the downside of, of you know learning at university it costs a lot of money unfortunately so i guess that's my talk about the two masters and my personal experience applying my plan is to make a few more different videos you know talking through talking you through my cv that i wrote because a lot of people may not know how to write an academic transcript and personally i didn't it took me a while to figure out how so i'll do a video on you know what my cv looked like i'll do a video on what my personal statement was like you know i would like to clarify that these may not have been the factors that got me into uni so it's not like if you do exactly this then you will get in this is just a case of these things probably contrib contributed to me getting in so i thought i'd try and share it with you and hopefully it will be some help because i know that when i was applying i wish i had some help from someone who had previously done it so yeah i'm gonna have those videos so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on those videos because hopefully they'll be quite useful if you do want to apply and my plan is to literally just do loads of videos on cambridge when i go there or before you know planning for it so lots and lots of videos coming on this channel I guess I will leave the video there. If you have any questions, you know, any questions at all, just pop them in the comments. I'm very happy to answer. People have been messaging me on Instagram, which for some reason, my messages don't come through for like a week or so afterwards. But I think I've updated it now. I've, I've got quite an old phone and I've made the mistake of not updating it. So yeah, my Instagram is kind of like bugging out a bit. But anyway, if you have any questions, then comment them down below or reach out to me on social media. My link's in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you all in the next video.